The prison program you're about to view consists of strong subject matter such as rape, gang fights, stabbings, police corruption, and extortion. Due to the nature and language of the program, viewer discretion is advised. There are over 2 million inmates in American prisons, state and federal. The stories you're about to hear are from men and women, ex-cons, felons, and convicts who witnessed and survived through rapes, slashings, gang violence, and extortion during their time in America's most dangerous prison systems. Prison X was created to give the viewer a first-person look at prison life during an inmate's most vulnerable time. These are not actors or actresses playing a part. All the stories told are 100% real. We were warned that it could be serious repercussions if these stories are released. Prison X is the evolution of Scared Straight with stories from outside of prison walls. Well, my name is Marcus Crossland. Um, I served 15, I served seven and a half to 15. I did um, 10 years out that seven and a half to 15. Um, my ID number is 95A2930. Um, what can I say? I did 10 years out the sentence. Uh, I've been to Attica, I've been to Sing Sing, I've been to Green Haven, I've been to Fishkill, Auburn. Yeah, these are places I've been. Um, I can tell you a bunch of stories, but um, one story stood out the most. When I was locked up, we were sitting in the mess hall, and um, I was with a young brother. Um, he just got 30 years, just came up north. Didn't know too much about the state or how the state ran or whatever, but um, we in the mess hall, so you had this uh, older dude, brother. He been there for some time. You know, I don't know exactly the, how much time he been there, but he been there for some time. So the young brother decided to just snatch his piece of bread out of his plate. So you know when you snatch something from somebody, you know everybody looking. So everybody looking like, oh shit, what, what are you gonna do? Like, so the old time he ain't say nothing. Old time we gave him a word of advice. Don't mess around and use your life over a piece of bread. Guess the young brother took it and ran with it. Didn't pay it no mind. Continued to do what he had to do or whatever, whatever. So later on that night, we in the yard, six o'clock rent. We all out walking around. The young brother playing basketball, the old timer walking around. You know, everything was forgot about. You know, even me, I forgot about it. I ain't even think about it. But as we walk in the yard, they call a go back. So everybody goes to the yard. Only thing you know, the old time will come up. Pulls out a knife. Stick short in his chest, neck, chest, neck. Wherever he can hit him at. But he hit him four times. As he hit him them four times, he was like, yeah, this is for the piece of bread. He didn't stab him for the piece of bread. He stabbed him for the respect. I was in Sing Sing um, in 90, 96. I just came up north. I was in Sing Sing. And I was with a lot of brothers. A lot of brothers I knew from the island, a lot of brothers I knew from the street. But we was all in one jail together. It had to be like 25 of us. We wasn't calling ourselves a crew, we wasn't calling ourselves a gang. But um, one story that uh, happened was when our little homeboys, he was blood, but nobody never really knew he was blood. But, you know, he was blood. So, he's running around doing all these crazy things on the island. 
But now we up north in Sing Sing. So nobody know what he did in the house. Cutting people, robbing people, you know. When I say crazy things, I mean robbing, stealing. But he didn't really know that when you build a rep for yourself, you know what goes around comes around. Because I don't know who he robbed per se, but the guy was Dominican. I don't know if anybody know about Dominicans. They they are crazy with knives. That's it. They love knives. He had went to the yard. Matter of fact, we all was in the yard. Um, and our showers was in the yard also. They got yard showers. So, had a couple of few brothers taking showers in the yard. You had a couple of brothers playing basketball. You have a couple of brothers playing handball. It's like a spread out situation. Everybody was spread out. But my little man went to go take a shower. And um, as he taking a shower, you know, he forgot about the dudes that he robbed. He forgot about that dude that he might have cut for no reason. He forgot about the dude that he might have disrespected for no reason. But you know, we in the sh you know, he taking a shower. And uh as well as myself, we all in the yard. It's my homeboy, you know. We all in the yard. But nobody's really paying attention to him. But ten minutes before they called go back, they found him in the shower dead. He got stabbed up. Um nobody really knew who did it. Cause nobody wasn't really paying attention. Nobody really knew, you know, what was really going on or but nobody knew his lifestyle. Nobody knew his lifestyle. But his lifestyle came back to haunt him. That's like a story that always stick to me because he was my homeboy. And you know, you find out things afterwards. You know, oh he did this, oh he did that. But when he came up north, I never knew, you know, what you know what he did on the island. That never mattered. Only thing that mattered was this was my homeboy. You know what I mean? I loved him regardless. Think of thing, whatever he did. But to see him in the shower dead, and then I realized like, yo, what did he do? So everybody went under investigation, like, yo, we gotta find out who did this, who did that. So a Dominican brother came up to me one day and said, yo, Bobby, listen. Yo, the brother that died in the shower, he said he violated. He violated my peoples. So when I say violate, I'm like, yo, what he do? You know, what he what he do to your peoples, you know what he Yo, he really Cut somebody in front of their family. Cut somebody on the visiting floor. And then I thought back again. I'm like, damn. Suppose somebody cut me on the visiting floor. How would I react? So then I looked at the Dominican dude. I wasn't upset. You know, I was hurt. But I wasn't upset. Because that was a disrespect. Whatever you have to do with somebody, he could have dealt with them at another time. Not on the visiting floor, not in front of his family. Another form of disrespect. So now I got a homeboy right now. Didn't even live his life. He'll be what? 23, 20, no, he'll be 26 right now, 27 right now. And he dead. Next time on Prison X. Damn. What I'm going to do now, because they get me to that SHU, they're going to kill me because a lot of dudes used to go down there and you never used to see them again. They family you never heard of them. You ain't never see these guys again. So I was going to be a statistic to that. For some, their first time in prison could have been their last time alive.
This is Prison X. Thank you.